Welcome to the lesson on protein. This is our third and last lesson on the macronutrients, the carbohydrates, lipids, and now proteins. Sometimes people believe protein is the most important nutrient that we consume and almost put it on a pedestal. And after this lesson, maybe we'll knock it off the pedestal. Not that it isn't important, very important, but no more so than any other essential nutrient. As we look at this lesson, we started a little bit different than we did the carbohydrates and the lipids. There we categorized and defined different types of lipids and uh, carbohydrates. But with proteins, the way we're going to start is by comparing the structure of a protein to that of, of starch. If you remember starch, and it's something like a potato, were these long chains of molecule, but every piece of that chain was identical. They were Every piece was glucose. If we look at a protein molecule, again, a long chain molecule, but instead of having identical links, the building blocks here are called amino acids, and there are 20 different amino acids. It can lead to then a huge variety of the types of proteins and what makes it so unique in the body. If we understand that relationship, then we can better understand the idea of how food impacts our body. And this is a classic example of where we are not what we eat. We do not take the protein in a hamburger and bring it into our body and use it. We are going to take these proteins, totally rip it apart into the individual amino acids, bring in those amino acids through the GI tract, and then our body will, by its DNA, tell you how to line those up and make the proteins. So once we understand that relationship between food protein, amino acids, amino acids in our body, and body protein, we can understand the other concepts related to proteins. For example, essential amino acids, the form and the function of a protein and how that is related to each other. How much protein we need and what happens when you don't have enough. Um, in the United States, we rarely have that problem, generally eat more protein than we need, but it's still a problem around the world. And then what happens when we do eat more than we need? You know, the idea that we eat protein to build more protein, we know is not true. So what happens to all that extra protein? And we'll look at that in this lesson. And then the idea of the quality of protein. If we only ate peanut butter, the quality of the protein is not as good as hamburger. What does that mean? If we understand the relationship of essential amino acids and amino acids and proteins, we'll get to that. So we're going to look at uh, proteins, the building relationship between amino acids and proteins, their quantity we need, and the quality, and how they relate to our health.